darlings, how are you? I hope that you are well. Welcome to the broadcast. I am your favorite Mermaid Mystic. I hope that you are well. Oh, we've got Prudence. Prudence is saying hello. They've just had a, a jaunt out in the garden. So now they're back into the cottage. So I'm doing very well, lovelies, about my <laughs> abandonment issue. And remember, I'm healing from that. So I'm very, very proud of myself that I'm allowed to let the kittens roam amongst the garden, off the terrace and all of that. And so it feels very, very lovely. I'm so happy about coming to that healing portion of my life. So let's get on, should we plunge right in to the broadcast. So one of the videos that I was requested, that was requested of me was can, because everyone loves my twin flame videos and I should probably do them more because they're so successful. They, they give me the most traffic on my channel. I don't know why I don't do no more than I do. But anyway, so today's broadcast is going to be a much more entail, uh, much more with different particular things about twin flames. Because like I said, a thumbnail on this video is we need to stop demonizing twin flames. And I always say that folks demonize the twin flames is because either they want one and they don't have it, or they don't understand it, or they're jealous of other people that do have it. And that, and maybe that's a broad spectrum of folks, but I don't understand what is the big problem with people saying that they have a twin flame. It's just like the Machine Gun Kelly and the, uh, what's her name? Megan Fox and people demonized her and thought that she was ridiculous and like even um i believe uh back in the day um i i remember like on instagram or something i saw some clip about what's that comedian's name what's her name um she had the beef with the uh chelsea handler i can't remember her name I want to say Heather, but what's her last name? Oh, McDonald. How could I forget that? McDonald, like McDonald's. But um, anyway, like um, I remember seeing some little clip or something on a on my my newsfeed one time, and I guess this was a few years ago or something where she was talking about like, oh, everyone wants to believe that like they talk about how they're twin flames and they. It's because you don't understand it, love. That's the problem you don't understand spirituality all these people that are like oh we want to manifest oh we're doing this it, it's like a trend for them it's a fad it's like a, a la fad if you don't understand manifestation like you're just getting into it so you need to zip your tongue and listen more that's why you have two ears and one mouth listen more okay just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you have to de demonize it. So anyway, if you can't tell, I'm very much for twin flame unions. And as far as they are, you know, described properly, and we're not making too much of this, okay, loves? Listen, we don't need to, you know, make a big weather of it, because here's the thing, that if you do not ever feel as though you believe in twin flames, it's probably because you don't really have that desire, nor do you feel as though you have one. But, but I have found that for me, the reason that I'm such an advocate for is because I believed in it for so many years and I did not speak of it because like I said, that was when I was very, very, you know, very timid and insecure about myself and the things that I thought and felt, you know, just like with tarot, like I would never tell people that I, that I can read tarot, like I'm more of an empath, but I'm, I'm very, very good at it. And, um, but I'm not going to go, it's kind of like, you know, casting your pearls before swine. You know, you don't want to do that too much because people will, th th already the world is a very, very um, difficult place for many, many folks if, if you are not aligned properly. So you should not, you know, like I said, you should not cast your pearls before swine, especially if, you know, these are your special, special tools and if they are sacred to you, then you should hold them close to the breast. But like I said, that's one thing. And another thing, another request that I had was, can 
twin flames of the opposite sex be platonic? And I'm going to go into a bit of detail about this and you know who you are. And I'm sure that this is going to be for general, you know, purposes that deem what you feel is speaking to you on that level. Um, otherwise, this maybe is not the video for you. So I will say, do you hear the kittens? I will say that that is one thing that you, that you want to know what you desire. If you desire a twin flame, if you, or you've been like me and for many, many years, although I was in a 25 year marriage, I was in religion at that time. All of you know this. If you've, if you've, like I said, you've watched my other videos and stuff, you know that I've long since, for nearly a decade, I've been talking about uh, twin flames and soulmates and, and, and such. And so there's many, many videos if you want to go back on my catalog and look at those. Now, understandably, I've grown quite, quite a bit, but there's some good knowledgeable things in there because that was back in the day when I was really, really invested in Abraham Hicks. And she has loads of things that are very, very valuable information, especially about twin flames and understanding the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame. So I'm going to go over that. That's kind of, this is sort of like a, a gen, general uh, purpose for what they are. A twin flame is basically, this is how Abraham Hicks describes it. And she talks about how like she was married before, you know, she was married before she was married to Jerry Hicks. Um, and she talks about how her and Jerry were twin flames, but her first husband was basically a soulmate. Like, and here is the proper definition of that. According to me, use it what you will take discretion of your own being because you are your own mermaid inner being and you know what is right for you and what rings true to you and what resonates with your spirit and your soul. If I don't resonate with you, then love, that's perfectly fine. But according to my knowledge and the things that I have received as far as spirit downloading information in regards to twin flames and soulmates is that, um, is that Twin flames are one soul split in half. You both are very much, and it's not like in such a drastic, I, here's the thing. I don't want you to feel as though there's so many people that cling to this particular notion because it's a fairy tale type of mentality that we want to believe in this ethereal, otherworldly, aspect of us feeling special okay let's let's just call a spade a spade darlings and that's perfectly fine if that gets you through the day and you're not hurting anyone and you want to believe that twin flames are real and that you want to have a twin flame because if you have if you have a desire to want a twin flame or you know that you have one you most definitely do you most definitely have one because they're I don't believe that the longing would be there because we are predetermined before our incarnation into earth life as a human, we come with those particular desires. So I do not believe that if you, before incarnation, you desire to have a twin flame, okay? That's, that's my particular belief. And deter, the determining factor is that I've had many, many downloads about this. And this is you know, I believe imperative for the collective as well to understand things in a proper way, because we want to, we want to not fantasize these type of things. Now, someone in the comment section of my last video talked about how there was a, I guess a, a cult or something, a twin flame cult or something of that nature. But because I felt, I, I Googled it quite, quite quickly because I'd never heard of it. And I felt that, like I told you, I'm very empathic. So um, I felt it was a, a very um, dark, deviant, uh, negative, low vibrational energy to that, to that. So I immediately clicked off of it. So I don't really understand. So I cannot talk about that because I don't, I don't know what that is all about. But I'm talking about it in a most lovely and wonderful and desirable way. Okay, and we're not we're not doing we're not doing cults. We're not doing any of this kind of stuff because I do believe that if you feel intuitively that your mermaid goddess, your mermaid being is telling you something, loves, 
then you must heed to your mermaid inner being because it will never lead you astray. And unfortunately, we've got many, many people that are wanting to sell the idealistic, let's just, let's just cut to the chase. They're trying to sell you a load of rubbish because many people are out there to take your money, okay? Many people are out there to profit off of your desire to want a twin flame, or your desire to understand things, or, you know, go to this academy and you're going to get all of the keys and knowledge. No, you know, you know what, my loves? You don't even need me to help you to do anything to find your twin flame, nothing of the sort. I'm just here as a messenger. And you know what? The people that find it will find it. But you don't need me. You don't need anyone to guide you to your twin flame. You don't need anyone. You have the path. You have the map, the mermaid map, to finding that particular person, which is your twin flame, okay? Now, the twin flame, like I said, is the splitting off of the opposite version. And I'm not even going to say that you can't have a twin flame that is of the same sex, okay? Because everyone comes in differently. So you very well may come in uh, as, a, as, a, as a split soul, which is two women and they are twin flames, but of the same sex. But as far as twin flames coming in and being platonic, um, the only reason, and, and I pulled a card on this, love, you know who you are. Um, I don't want to call your name out specifically because you might not want me to, but um, we'll have a chat because I need to get your email because I did your reading. And um, the one thing that I will talk about as a general perspective is that you can have them as a platonic. However, there may be a reason that they only, that one or the other, is wanting to be platonic. And that may ha very well have something to do with if they are of the opposite sex. Say for example, let's pretend that Jeffrey Sean and I are twin flames, but we, it, perhaps he wants to be keep it platonic and I don't, okay? One very well may want to, the other one wants to make it go farther, okay? Now, the reason that you would, one would want to keep it platonic would be because they have some shadow issues that are in front of the twin flame or say for example I'm sitting in front of Jeffrey Sean and he's like you know I don't I don't want to you know marry you I don't want to date I don't want to do anything let's just keep it friends this is this is either coming from a fear based belief of that person that's tied into some kind of, because when you meet your twin flame, you know it invariably, but it almost is exactly in the equal sense of it, terrifying. Because what it makes you do is you have to see all the mirror reflections of yourself. That means the good portions of you and also the bad portions, or the things that you need healed. For example, one of mine was a, my fear of trusting another person that was a male. And well, I mean, I, I had to, I had trust issues with women as well, but more obviously in a relationship with my past because see, I left my first husband after 25 years and divorced him, but I carried myself with me into my twin flame relationship. So therefore it's going to exemplify. It is absolutely going to shine a light on it even more so because now you're even, there's there's no barrier between you and the twin flame. Now you're forced to have to look at it because you're so tied and tethered to that twin flame, but also it terrifies you so you want to run, which is only fear and fear is only an emotion, okay? So mermaid goddesses need to understand that fear is only an emotion. It's not a big deal. We think it's a big deal because we're human, but your mermaid essence of you is like, there's nothing I can't accomplish. There's nothing I can't get over or accomplish. And this is another beautiful way that, how can I work through this? Like, oh, my mate doesn't want to be anything but platonic. So then it's your job to mate with your own soul because you are your own soul mate. So you must become your own soul mate first, then 
everyone else you understand is you pushed out, which means that you are the reflection of everyone around you, right? That's the law of assumption, which is different. That's a Neville Goddard technique and a Neville Goddard law, understanding the Bible and how the universe works, right? Which is opposite than the law of attraction, which is everything is outside of you and you're pulling everything in. You're bringing it, it's attracting, okay? But I really love Neville Goddard because I think he is exceptionally deep. That's why I have this channel and I've reactivated it because I really want you to understand the laws broken down. Because there is a lot of TikTok stuff, there's lots of YouTube videos and content creators that talk about the law of assumption, law of attraction, but they really don't have it. They, they're looking at it like a means to an end of like, this is my employment and you want to manifest. That's the human humanness. It's not the mermaidness of why we're here put on earth, okay? The purpose is not for that, to accumulate things, okay? It, it, that's not what it is. But understandably, humans get a little messed up, you know? Obviously, we all do. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm saying that, you know, we're all on the path or we're all on the voyage to becoming the truest versions of ourselves. And I want to help everyone to get there, okay? Um, learning about this Christ consciousness and the awakening but so back to the soulmates so if you don't know yet I'm all over the place because listen I'm a Pisces okay and I and then I'm cancer I, I'm cancer um, moon and then I'm Sagittarius rising so I'm like a hot flame in water put water and fire together and I'm all over the place okay but Pisces mostly that is my sun sign so you have to understand that that I'm very much, very much a talker, and I'm very much all over the place. Okay, this is this is the the way that I communicate best. And so, I'll, if I miss something, just write it in the comments, loves, and I will try to address it, or I will comment to you, comment you back, you know, or whatever. But soulmates are everyone. You know, my cat is my soulmate. All three of my kittens are my soulmate. My mom and dad are my soulmate. My brothers are my soulmate. Anyone, in, and I know that that's very difficult because that's a very big stretch of enlightenment and awakening to understand that even that homeless person, that homeless gal that you saw walking on the street is your soulmate. Because everyone incarnated at the same time as us are our soulmate, they are our soul family, which I like to call them our shoal family, right? School of fish, right? School of mermaids. But, and and that might take you a lot longer to get there because that's a very difficult thing for many, many people. Many people go through their entire lives and don't understand that everyone is their soulmate. And it's a way of looking at everyone as if you are God. And so when you are God and you have God consciousness, you you love everyone. And that is a very difficult thing to do, okay? I'm not saying that I'm asking you to do that right today, but learning to to love the essence of every soul, that, that doesn't mean anything. That's not anything about morality, okay? Do you understand? It's loving the soul because everyone's a soul. So when we return to consciousness, right? And we're collectively back again with consciousness as a whole, we do not have human emotions like we do when we're on earth. You know, I can't stand that person. I'm racist against this person. I don't like that president. That girl ticks me off and she tried to steal my boy, you know, or that girl, you know, betrayed me or whatever. Like we don't have those emotions when, when we're not human, when we're spirit. Do you understand? Like we have, the veil is removed from us. And so, or I call the scales are removed from us. So we don't understand things in the human form anymore. And we have had the veil put upon us before we incarnated, and then we don't receive it again until our transition backward, back, you know, to consciousness. So, and, and yes, that's very difficult. There's many, many things that you're going to find on my channel that's like, oh, that's a little bit deep, deep, Razzie. But the reason that I want to talk to you about this is because there's so much falsehood and so much propaganda and nonsense on stilts. It's just basic rubbish, basic rubbish out there in the world. 
I've done loads of, of internal work, you know, nearly a decade of really diving deep. And remember that I also have the advantage of many, many travesties and viscitudes that have happened in my life. You know, losing my son to brutally being murdered and having no money, no means to an end, like parent alienation from my children, that, and I was a housewife, a home, homemaker, and I was in a marriage for 30 years, you know, 25 years, and I was with him for 30. Two heavy uh, religions, you know, Pentecostal and then uh, Mormonism. And so it, I have loads of information that I can help you with in your life. And so this I've used as, as a measure for teaching because I, it really does take care of a lot of reasoning as to why people struggle with the law of assumption and law of attraction and manifesting things and belief and having a self-concept because loads of it is how we were trained and raised as children you know little lasses and lads and uh, we received belief systems that were um, ingrained in us especially if you come from a background of religion that has been very difficult it will be very difficult uh for people to to realize that because they want to skip they want to get right to the dessert don't they most people do like oh i want the dessert i want that they don't want to do the fun part the fun part is learning oh what is it about me that i want to keep a relationship with my twin flame platonic let's look into that it, I want you to be happy that the joy is in the voyage. The joy is in the journey, my loves. One, understanding things about yourself, becoming the enlightened soul and the mermaid goddess within you. That is the beauty of this life. Not what I can get and, and everything is compressed and unhappy because you feel so like you're working your life away <laughs> isn't there a song working my life away um anyway so i get loads of songs too when i get downloads you know from like doing my my tarot cards and all and um i always get songs uh but anyway that was probably seeping in there somewhere but i wanted to leave these things with you i don't know if that really really helped but i hope that you bore with me uh throughout the entire video and um if you have any other questions i i will like i said in the description box i'll leave a few of the twin flame videos have a fiddle and tick on some of those videos and you might you might derive some benefit from them i think that you most definitely will and it, <laughs> understandably look at the transformation that I've had so nothing is impossible uh, I was a completely different person than I was even four years ago before my son passed you know um, it puts loads of things into perspective let me just tell you that when you lose a child but anyway life is dandy we're having a whale of a time over here and I hope that you will like, comment and subscribe if you so choose. I don't want to feel as though I'm pressuring you, but I know that you want to because I'm your favorite mermaid mystic, right? All right. So as always, I'm most affably yours until my next whim. Cheers, darlings. Toodle pip.